Over this past summer, my family and I were able to take advantage of some opportunities to go to the Rocky Mountains, which is about four or five hours west of, of where I live, and go for some hikes. And there was this one hike that was just such a spectacle in every direction you turned, it would just take your breath away. And as we were doing so, I was reminded of an anecdote that C.S. Lewis shares in his book, The Abolition of Man, which as a digression, by the way, I would consider probably the most important book, uh, the most important modern book that I've ever read. So as a side note, go check that out if this topic is interesting to you. Anyway, he treats this scenario in which two people are observing uh, an incredible waterfall, much like the ones that we saw on our hikes. And he acknowledges that there could be two responses to these two people observing this waterfall. One could be, it is amazing, it is majestic, it is beautiful, it is sublime. Whereas the other one could be, I have majestic feelings, I am in awe. And if you're willing to dig deep, to really examine those two alternatives, you might find that the difference between these two reactions can reveal to us the very heart the very core of human evil. Take any obvious example that we can all agree upon and point at it and say, yes, that, that is evil. And you will find that there is a common denominator among the various examples that we might point at. The same erroneous pattern of thinking and the behavior that proceeds from that pattern of thinking is at the root of all evil. And that root is the habit of supplanting the object for the subject. <laughs> I know, terrifying, right? You're probably thinking like, what, what, that's, that's it? Now, bear with me for a second. Don't let the subtlety of that lead you to dismissing it or to treating it as a trivial thing. Um, let's, let's look at that with some closer consideration. So let's go back to the waterfall for a second. The subject in this scenario is you. You are the one observing the waterfall, which is the object in this scenario. When you say it's sublime, it's majestic, you are keeping the focus and the interest on the waterfall, on the object, on the thing that is external to you. But in the alternative scenario where you say, I have sublime feelings, you are supplanting the significance of the object, which is the waterfall, and replacing it with the subject, which is you. This is the attitude and the instinct of subjectivism. It's this desire to make everything about you rather than the world, uh, reality, the people and the things which occupy it, which are the objects of your experience, which would be objectivism. And it's this, this instinct, or maybe even temptation would be a better way of describing it, to make everything about our experiences about us, to make us the focal point of everything, to turn inwards upon ourselves, to describe our emotions, our thoughts, our experiences with this narrow sort of subjective perspective, rather than looking outward towards all that exists and all that might reduce our own ego and sense of self-importance. Turning outwards, looking outwards, inquiring outwards is the process by which we can have our perspective enhanced and changed rather than con staying confined within our own feelings and our own, our own thoughts. And it is this that I would accuse as being at the heart of all human evil, this desire to make everything about just us, ourselves. Take any grave evil that most of us would agree is actually an evil. And one of the worst ones that I can think of is an adult abusing a child, especially for the sake of their own pleasure. So this is a scenario in which the abuser has given all the priority to their emotions and their desires with no consideration or concern for the desires, the emotions, the dignity, or the welfare of the child. In this scenario, the child is the object and the abuser is the subject, and he pays all of his attention and regard to the needs and the desires of the subject. In his experience, everything is about him. When he sees a waterfall, it isn't an occasion to appreciate something that is that, that has beautiful properties that he doesn't possess himself. Instead, it's an occasion to, to appreciate how it makes him feel. It's just all about him in the end. When he encounters the child, his first priority is his experience and satisfying his wants because he lives his life in a pattern of only considering himself. This 
pattern of thinking and behavior is at the root of narcissism, at the root of selfishness, at the root of greed, lust, and laziness. Instead of focusing our attention on the objects and the people and the things around us, we, we just do what we want and, and approach things from the perspective of the subjective. Christianity in its condemnation of this attitude and this behavior and all the behavior that proceeds from it has rightly called it the sin of pride, which is at the root of all other sins and evils. Every other evil is inspired or contingent upon this particular evil. When we insist upon our own agenda, our own needs and our own desires at the expense of somebody else's needs and desires, it is this instinct, this subjectivism that we are following. When we take more of our share of the, the available resources, it is this instinct that we are following. When we abuse other people, when we manipulate them, when we lie to them to gain something for ourselves or some perceived benefit to ourselves, it is this instinct that we are following. Cowardice, greed, gluttony, laziness, abuse of other people, disregard for other people and their needs as well as the world around us can all be traced back to, to this instinct. All the great lessons of all the great myths and the religions have always cautioned us about this mindset and the kinds of behaviors that, that kind of proceed from it. And historically, our most prominent sages, prophets, and philosophers all agreed that selfishness and narcissism is the path to destruction, and that it's much better for us to appreciate, explore, and love the world around us and the people within it. And even without their help, just do the math on this. There is something approaching 8 billion other people in the world and just one of us. That's, that's 8 billion stories that could captivate our attention, and yet instead we spent all of our finite attention focusing on ourselves. It's not just evil, it's, it's irrational. It is when we indulge that kind of narcissism and turn inwards on ourselves that we, that we manifest injustice, evil, abuse, and contempt for our neighbors. And in spite of the good examples of, of many of our ancestors, people like Plato and Aristotle, Confucius, Buddha, and of course, Jesus Christ, in more recent times, the, this selfish and narcissistic instinct has not only not been discouraged, but it has been promoted as our greatest fulfillment. In the modern age, subjectivism and relativism have become like the dominant persuasions in society, especially Western society. It was in the age of the so-called enlightenment, as the church's role was increasingly marginalized, that persuasive thinkers convinced us to reduce everything to the subjective and the relative. Until we find ourselves today where goodness, beauty, and even truth itself are not seen as objects of discovery that can enhance our own experience of life, but as something to, with which we could project our thoughts and our emotions and our desires and sensibilities onto, the subject has taken the place of priority of the object. And the subject, which is again us, is the one who suffers the most for it. We suffer when we can't look outwards and appreciate the majesty, the glory, the beauty, the splendor of the world around us, and the great interest of the people and the relationships and the possible stories that we could explore with them around us as well, instead preferring our, our narrow, closed-minded self-centeredness. And if you ever wonder why it seems that things are going crazy and mad and just getting worse, Worse in the world around us, at least in so far as human beings have the ability to influence that, this is why. The thing that has always been kept at bay by our greatest thinkers and philosophers and prophets and recognizes the root of all evil has now been enshrined as the noble motive for everything we do. This selfishness, this pride, this egotism and narcissism. We are told to go out and seek self fulfillment. And if we ever have any problems along the way, we're told, well, examine yourself, explore yourself, discover yourself. These are the kinds of mottos and the philosophy underneath it that are at the root of all of the problems of human society today. Thanks for watching. The reason I can continue making content like this is because of the generous support of my viewers. If you feel called to support this work, then consider joining the Reinforcements, which is my online community. There are multiple tiers, including free access for those who can't help financially but still want to join. You can join up at www.brianholtworth.ca. Certain levels will also get a free gift basket from Glory and Shine, who is a family-owned Catholic bath and body products company whose beard balm I'm wearing right now. It's like aromatherapy for your face. 
Even if you don't join, they make amazing products. So check them out at gloryandshine.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe. You don't have to agree with everything I said to get value out of these kinds of conversations. So be sure to subscribe to be edified or challenged. There's value in both.